Hello, I'm here again with another tip for RPG Maker. This is tip number three, and this is going to be about how to create what I call random NPCs. Um, this is a great way to make your maps seem more live and realistic uh, and like a place that's actually lived in. So let me show you what it looks like. Um, I made a quick example map here. Please forgive my mapping. This is just to illustrate the concept. So I'll start this up. So I have this hallway and as you can see this guy just came out of this door over here and walked around. Um, now if I leave and come back I get a different NPC, I can talk to her, she, I just had him say hi, I'm random NPC number whatever, um, and essentially in this example I made four of these, I don't, it's random so I don't know if I'll get all four, yeah that's the same one again, um, but there's two other ones that can appear. <laughs> of course, I'm going to keep getting the same, too. Uh, here's another one. So that's basically the idea, is to just give the appearance that, um, you know, there's people walking around this place doing things, and I can talk to them. Um, now, the best part of this is that you can do all of this with one event. Um, if you haven't seen tip number two, talking about how to consolidate things into one event, um, definitely check that out. So um, all four of those NPCs that can appear are all part of this one event, uh, and I'm going to show you how to do this. So um, I think I'll just remake it from scratch. That's probably the easiest way, rather than trying to explain what every line of code does. Um, so I'll hit delete. We'll make a new event and I'll just call it random NPCs. And every NPC is going to have their own page. So I don't think I'll recreate all four for this example. Uh, maybe I'll just do like two. Um, so the first page we need to save and we'll come back to later. Uh, so I need a new page for the first NPC and a new page for the second NPC. And then what you want to do is have these triggered by a variable. So I'll click here. I already made it. I just called it random. Um, and this first page is going to take effect when it's one or above. And the second page is going to take effect when it's two or above. Um, and then each one of these pages for the NPC is going to be a triggered by action button. So that's good. We want the walking animation on. Uh, so that's good on both of them. And we want the priority same as characters. Same as characters. And then you can put in whatever speed and frequency you want. I kind of like slower with the highest frequency seems like the most natural looking movement to me. Um, so we'll go slower and highest on both of them. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now the first page is going to be an auto run. And all it's going to do is control variables and we're going to set that random variable to a random between 1 and 2 because I'm doing two NPCs. Um, when I did this before and had four of them, I had it set between 1 and 4 and I had, you know, four pages of NPCs. But just to keep this simple, we'll do two. So we set a random variable between 1 and 2. Um, and then we're going to have two conditional branches. one when that variable is one and 
1 when that variable is 2. And then for each of these, we're going to do a set event location. Um, so let's say let's say what we want to do first. Let's say I want the first one to appear here and just walk down the hall and then disappear. And I want the second one to come out of this door, walk down, and then walk down the hall and disappear. So um, first we need to get the event in the right location to do the right thing. So when random is 1, that's going to be this first guy that just walks like this. So inside that conditional branch, I will go set event location. And I'll just pick right there where I want them to start. So that gets my event in place. And on this one, this is the guy when random's 2, the guy that's going to come out of this door. So I'm going to set his location right here above the door. Um, so that's that. Um, I think we're pretty much done with this one now. So we just go to his page. So when randoms one or above, um, and what you do is set a custom move route and then just hit here and you can tell it what you want it to do. So notice I start with this, he has no graphic. So inside this move route, um, first I want to get him facing the right direction. He's going to be walking this way. So I want him facing right. So I'll do a turn right and then I need to give him a graphic. Um, we'll just make it this old guy. Um, and then he's going to go right, 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 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 move rights. 14, 15, 16. And then we just turn his graphic off to give the appearance that he walked off the screen. Um, we don't want to repeat action or skip if cannot move. And very important, you want to turn his through on after that. Otherwise, he's going to be, even though he doesn't have a graphic, he's going to be standing right here and it'll block, you know, the player won't be able to walk over him or anything. Um, so you want to turn the through on. Um, so that should be it for that guy. Um, now the second guy is a little harder because he's coming out of a door. Um, so the first thing we want to do is open the door and we have to do this here under our auto run. So under this conditional branch, when randoms two, we are going to set move route on the door. I happen to know that's door one. Um, so I, I assume you know how to do a door. You just turn it a few times. It's left, right, up to give the appearance of it opening. So turn left, wait five frames, uh, turn right, wait five frames, and turn up. Oh, I like to play a sound effect too at the beginning. Um, I will give it this open one sound effect. So we play the sound effect, the door opens, then we're going to wait one second or 60 frames. And then we're going to shut the door. This will make sense in a second. Um, so to shut the door, we have to do the opposite. So it's turn right, wait five frames, turn left, wait five frames, uh, turn down. And we do not want to wait for completion on this because the reason I put this one second wait here is because in that time frame, the guy's going to walk out of the door and then it'll shut behind him. If I check wait, it won't sync things correctly, so make sure this wait for completion isn't checked. Um, that should be it there, and then we just need to take care of his movement. So same thing, we give him a custom move route, 
And since he's starting, remember he's starting right here, so he's inside a wall. So we need to turn his through on so that he's able to move. And then he's, we're just going to have him move down, still with no graphic. So move down. Then we'll give him a graphic. Um, let's say this one. So I guess it's a her. Um, move down again. That'll put her right here. So now she's out of the wall, and we can turn her through off. So through off. Then we need to move down one more. And it looks like we need to go right, 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 right. Um, now she's at the edge of the screen. We can turn her graphic off and through on. Don't repeat. Don't skip. Um, I think we are done with the event here. So just to recap, first it assigns this random variable, a number between 1 and 2. If it's 1, it puts the event here. If it's 2, it puts the event here and opens the door and shuts it. Um, and then when random's 1 is 1, this guy appears and walks over here. And when random is 2, this girl appears through the door and walks over here. Um, now there's one more thing we need to do because we want this to happen, one of these to happen every time we're on this map. So whenever we leave this map, we need to reset the random to zero so that we go back to this page and our auto run runs again. If you don't do this, you know, it's still going to be one when you come back and it's going to get all messed up. So um, I have in this store, I already did it from before. So, this door goes to this other map, um, and when I go through it, I set random back to zero. And if I had other exits, like if these doors actually went anywhere, or these hallways actually went anywhere, you would want to do that on those to turn the random back to zero, so that when we come back, um, we go back to our auto run. So I've probably messed something up, but let's play test it and see what happens. Hey, hey, that's the one I was worried about. Oh, I forgot to make it so we can talk to him. Um, that's pretty easy, though. So it looked like that one worked. Let's go out and come back in a few times. There's the other one. Yeah, okay, it looks like it's working. Um, so obviously, you can mix it up more so that, I mean, it looks kind of silly with this just two, you know, the same girl walking out of the same door every time. So you can add more. You can also set, um, I could do a third page when, you know, random is three or above and just have it do nothing and then change this to generate between 1 and 3, so sometimes there won't be anybody. Um, there's a lot of ways you can mix it up. So th that's pretty much it for this one. Um, like I say, this is a great way to make the place seem more alive and give the appearance of um, things going on that, you know, when the player isn't there. So let me know what you think. Uh, comments, likes, subscriptions are appreciated. Thank you.